So, Bob, we just talked to Polly. So, give us a couple comments about what you've seen from him, his his progress or lack thereof, or what do you think of Polly? No, he's getting better and better. Um, he's, he's starting to rebound the ball better, uh, particularly at the offensive end. He's of of our bigs. He's he's the best low post scorer we have. So. You need that, right? Bad. Yeah. JB said um, after Akron, two things that you've been working on: rebounding, transition defense. Where are you now? Where you weren't twelve days ago? Well, we got a lot more to work on than that. I mean, we're 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 trying to. They they run some, uh, and Greg always has some. Uh, how do I say it? Unconventional things that are that are really different looks, and and um, I, I thought it was really important that we we kind of learn where they're coming from, um, and then we're trying to continue to get better in what we do. Um, but I didn't. I mean. If we've worked really hard on rebound, I missed it. So these guys do a lot of quick hitter stuff? Um, I don't know necessarily quick hitter. They, they, uh, they're they probably – I don't know if they'll try to do it against us, but against the, the teams that they've played against to this point, they've isoed a lot. Martin. And really kind of – Really, whoever they think has a dis has an advantage. It's I don't I don't think it's one particular guy. I think it's more whoever they feel like they can take advantage of. But Martin, pretty good player. Mm-hmm. Very good player. They've got good players. Greg does a great job. They've got they've got transfers. You know, they've got some JUCOs. They've got some uh, high school kids that came in that are seems to me like they're getting better and better so interesting that you're going against a guy that's coaching about as long as you have well we've known each other for a long time um, I mean he was doing what I was doing when I was at Walsh College you know and what he's done at Oakland is is remarkable and you know I we went in there when I was at Cincinnati. I think we played in Detroit one year, and and in, in, in a tournament, and we went in there to to get a workout in, and it was it was old, and and the place they got now is really nice. I mean, he's done a great job. I mean, he's spur headed, uh, a, a big upgrade in facilities, and he does a lot of charitable things in the community. Be that there that long? That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, I mean he likes it though. I think I think it's I think it's a place that he's he's really comfortable in. He likes living there. He likes the area, you know. I um, I was trying to continue to move and go higher. That's why I left Akron. I liked Akron. I love Canton. So. And you didn't like Green. Um, no. Well, like a lot of things, you know. You don't. Sometimes you don't like what goes on either. Bob, at this point, how much do you know about your team? How much do you have to play games to really sort of get the final feel of how good you are or aren't? Well, hopefully, I mean that was kind of what we were that we tried to do with the scrimmage, and and we were. We were really bad. Um, I think we were better against Akron, but we didn't sustain anything. And, and um, you know, that's that message I think has came across to them loud and clear. I think we're we're doing a better job finishing practices. You know, you, you generally the way you practice, the way you play, and and we've started out pretty good in practice, and it's tailed off, and it's got you know it's got worse as the as the time went on, and that's kind of what happened in the Akron game. Well, we score four field goals in 15 minutes or something like that. Hard to win like that. Are you figuring this team out? I mean, go back and look. You've won a lot of games because you figure things out pretty quickly. Are you 
struggling with this team, or are you getting a, a better feel for what you want them to do and what they can do? We've been very inconsistent. Um, and and, and I, I'm, I'm, a lot of that's my fault. I've thrown a lot of things at them because I want to see what we can do and what we can't do. So we've, we've, we've thrown a variety of defenses to try to see how they reacted in those. We've, we've changed some things offensively to see how they react to those. But um, that inconsistency may have led to their inconsistency. Um, but I think, you know, as time goes on, I think they'll become more accustomed to what we're trying to do and hopefully we'll be capable of doing uh, more than just a couple things. You feel good about their cumulative IQ, basketball IQ? You able to do some of the things you want to do? I don't feel very good about anybody's in today's age, to be honest with you. It's a different it's a different deal. I mean it's a totally, totally different deal. And it should be. I mean, should be. The, the, the guys today are so much more athletic. They're so much, they're so much bigger, stronger. They have, they have all the facilities and wherewithal to, to be able to do that. That didn't happen before. How about relative to the teams that you're playing today? Wow, well, most of those have what we have. That's, that's why when I came back here, you know, I, I spend time talking to Eddie trying to say you know hey we need to we need to upgrade this if we're going to if we're going to be able to compete with the people that we have to compete with and and you know to Eddie's credit he was great what about the basketball IQ relative to the team that you're playing today you feel good about them being able to handle the things that you're throwing at them well i mean it's 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 the longer we do it the better they're going to understand it you know it's it's kind of like you walking into a, um, some foreign language class and expecting you to walk out of there, you know, a day or two later and be able to speak the language. You have a hell of a hard time speaking English, so, I mean, it'd be tough for you. I understand that. But, um, no, I mean, it's, it's, it, it takes time. I mean, it really does. It takes time. Gian was saying that uh, EJ, I guess, has recovered from Bumping the face thing. Well, yeah, and then he landed on his. You know, they have them little things in there that monitor everything that, you know, their their heart rate and their heartbeat and like everything. Well, uh, somebody somebody at Nike came up with a great idea. Let's put them in the back of the shorts, because they were wearing them around their arm, and of course, our luck, he falls right on it. You know. You got yeah, I mean, uh, so that little thing kind of. Well, the bad losses was was a result of a of a, a lot of other things that went on that had nothing to do with basketball, um, which I don't really don't want to get into because it had, would not um, look good for um, some people. So I'm let's leave that alone. Um, Syracuse loss was hard. I mean, but. You know, we had some guys that didn't play the way they had been playing, and and I don't, you know, I, I don't know. As long as I've been doing this, I don't know what you do. I mean, think think about when we got beat the first round of the tournament by a mid-major at best, and they and they dominated us. We just didn't want to play, and and I don't, Bob, I don't understand 
the the why you know that things like that happen it wasn't and and i mean we weren't but we weren't good in practice either we weren't good in practice for a couple of days and i kept saying hey guys man we got to turn this up they're better than what you're giving them credit for being and they never did um and and really most of those guys were gone then We live in a world where everybody thinks they're better than what they are, and and you know that that's um that's that that makes it tough. I mean, you look at look at all the people who put their name in a transfer portal, thinking they were going to go somewhere higher or bigger because of they thought they were better than what they are, and look at the number of people that are left in it in, in the portal. Look at look at the people who continually put their name in every. I mean, every time I get these things. I think Jay Koontz did it, but but it it, it like like a bell rings on my thing when I I get that somebody has uh, uh, as as a result of declaring for the NBA draft and not taking their name out in time uh, is now uh, trying to negotiate with the NCAA to get their eligibility back. But they were sure they were pros, and, and it's it, we just live in that world. You know, and we live in a world where we're constantly trying to trying to talk to people about reality, and and it's hard. I mean, it's hard because you got so many people on the outside, and then you got a bunch of of, of uh, wannabe agents and those kind of things who are trying to sell the fact of what they can do, and they know this person and they know that person, and. And and they'll be able to get them into this deal or that, and then it never comes to fruition. And, and so, uh, you know, you 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 fight so many things on the outside, and and you know, kids talk. You know, hey, I got this guy that said he can get me, you know, to here, and and then and then they're like, oh man, I maybe I ought to talk to him. You know, and it's just, and you can't. It's hard to fight because you don't. A lot of times you don't even know who they are. You know, I mean, we've had guys running around here on campus that I had no idea who they were. I mean, I, the ones I know, I can kind of chase off. But but if I don't know who they are, and there's agents everywhere. I mean, uh, we're we're stupid not to think that there's not a bunch of agents, you know, waiting to pray here from Pittsburgh or Cleveland or Youngstown or Columbus or wherever and they do and they prey on those kids and it and it it you can kind of tell because they totally change their 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 attitude and and their approach and everything totally changes that's hard and it's that's a that's that i think is one of the hardest things that that we have to deal with in today's world and you know that there were there were times when, you know, I, I and I, I, I tell this all the time. Kenny and Martin walked in my office and he said, "Hey, coach, I got these people telling me that, um, that I can go like 14th in the draft or something like that." As I forget exactly what he said, but it was something like that. And he said, "What do you think?" I said, "Well, I think if you come back, you'll be the first pick in the draft. I mean, you've made that much progress, and if you continue to work the way you're working, and tell those people to leave you alone." You know, and then you and I deal with this. I think you could be the first pick in the draft, and because he and I had, I guess, that close a relationship, he said, "Okay." He walked out and I never said another word about it until, you know, he he unfortunately broke his leg, and and but he was I mean, he was still the number one pick in the draft. You know. And, I, and I'd like to think I know more than what those clowns know that are telling these guys all this stuff. But, but I'm not telling them. I'm not. I'm not telling them the same thing they're telling them. It's not as appealing what I'm telling them. Probably not what they want to hear. <laughs> well, no, they don't want to hear it. They don't. I don't. No, nobody wants to hear you've got a long way to go. You, you've got to, you know, get in and work on this and work on that. And, you know, they want to. They want to walk out and think that. And it, I mean, it's. It happens everywhere, every day. 
James Conquo because of injury is going to redshirt. Have you decided is anybody else going to redshirt? You going to hold anybody out and start tomorrow? Um, I don't know. I it, I don't have to decide that for a while. I'm curious with the um, the way you've got things structured. You had uh, whatever it was, twelve days from Akron to, to this block of games coming up. You got two in a row. And you got another six days before you play again. Is that is that by design to give you time to digest and absorb what you got and tweak things, and or has it just worked out that way? Josh does the schedule. I mean, he he runs it by me, but Josh Josh really does the the, the bulk of the scheduling. No, it's 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 um, believe it or not, John. Most people really don't want to play us, and they don't. And they 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 know that there's a chance they could get beat pretty good. And I mean, if you you think about. Uh, particularly like when we were when we were press Virginia, we had a heck of a time getting games. Nobody wanted to play against that, and that and this group, I think, because nobody knew really who we had. You know, I mean, you you know, we had like a, that core of three or four guys, but the rest of them were kind of out there, so they didn't know whether they were, we were going to be really really good or really bad, or nobody knew. And, and so instead of chancing the unknown, we had a hard time. The, honestly, the, a lot of the games we're playing are because of relationships I have with people, you know, over a long period of time. I mean, Greg goes and plays everybody. I mean, yeah. Look at who he plays. He plays everybody early. Well, he has to. I mean, that's that's a, you know, when you're when you're playing at that level, when you you know you rely on uh, on the guarantee. And, and that's not, <coughs> excuse me, that's not just Greg and Oakland. That's a whole bunch of people. But has this been helpful for you to be able to fix things that bother you? I mean, I know you got a quick turnaround with Pitt coming up on Friday, but you're going to have some time between Pitt and when you play Elon to, to, to work on things and fix more things. We had no control over that. Okay. So we had absolutely no control over that because that's, that's an ESPN event. Gotcha. And they tell us when to play. It's it's the same way with with the majority of our games now. <coughs> Excuse me. When you're on when you're on ESPN as much as we are, they tell us when to play. We don't tell them when we want to play. And and unfortunately, you know, my guys at ESPN are retiring. So now there's a new group coming in. You know, the guys that I had, I mean, like you know, we we were we were telling a story. We're all sitting in a room, and it comes on that that. Uh, yeah, the Gonzaga thing. Yeah, they, they somebody wasn't going to play. I pick up the phone and call, and Mess can tell you we were we had a game scheduled in about ten minutes, didn't we? If that, yeah. But you know now it's it's kind of they tell you when to play. They tell you you know okay we have you know we've we've got a opening here and here. Do you want them? <coughs> yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Where are you gonna play it? Are you gonna play it on Saturday in football? He's had a, a bad ankle sprain. He's had a bunch of stuff happen. He just, yes, his, his hand was, he's playing with one hand for a while. He should, wish he kind of, in a way, broke, uh, hurt the right one. Then he could dribble and pass better left-handed. But, um, no, he's, he's, he's played with a lot of stuff. You're pretty much pretty, health-wise, pretty, everyone's pretty full go for Yeah, I mean we've had some, you know, some twisted ankles and guys guys falling down, getting hit in the head a little bit or something, but nothing bad. How about scoring close to the goal? You getting any closer to where you want to be there? Mm -mm. Still. We're we're the, I mean, we've had one guy who has kind of maybe separated himself from the rest of them. 
you talk to him today. Because those are the, it's, you know, it, 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 I, I sit there and it's hard for me not to like either blow a gasket or, or, or laugh at him. How, how you think you're going to make a shot if you never look where you're shooting it? Oh, it's, it, it's incredible. So, so the ball's there, and so you're looking down at the ball, and then all of a sudden you want to get it off before they block it, so now it's a – and you don't see the ball until it, like, goes over the rim on the other side. And then it's like, dang. <laughs> no, not dang. So the guy that's getting closer, is he looking at the rim when he's trying to shoot it closer? You know, John, I think I think you have to want to be really good to be really good. And I and I know I probably told you guys this story. Danny Fortson was kind of crotching it, you know, hit hit between the backboard and the rim, and not getting it over the rim. And and uh, I got two f- football tackles to come in and take the pad and hit him with the pad. So and contact will bring the ball down. When when you when you go to score and you have contact, it's automatically going to bring the ball down from where you think you shot it. And that's why you see so many of those shots are short because the contact just just makes the ball come down. So I got Danny in there, and then Danny said, "Coach, we need to get another guy." So they had three guys, and then he ended up with four guys. Because he wore him out. I mean, he he wore him out. But you know, then the flip side of it is he's like the whatever the second or third leading rebounder in the country. He's he's uh, he's getting twenty some a game, and he's first round draft pick. But it wasn't it wasn't because he sit on his ass and didn't do anything. I mean, he worked, put time in, cared. Uh, well, they weren't very good back then. They weren't very good back then. But, you know, with with a Danny Fortson, you could get any of these guys you want here, and he'd knock them on their ass. I mean, he he was the real deal. I've been sitting here admiring your hair. Well, I can tell you what I was hoping would be good. I was hoping that Taz, Sean, JB, uh, Isaiah were shot at very consistently because then I thought we could really spread people, and then we could we could get some easy ones. We could get it we could get it to the basket and not not had the lane so congested. And I was my my hope was that. And because those guys put a lot of time in this summer, I, w- I was hoping that they would be very consistent making shots. But as you saw in the uh, the Akron game, we were not very consistent making shots. Taz but was. Taz, well, Taz was, yeah. But, I mean, we, we take Taz out. He doesn't play, but what, what he set out, what, missed 18 minutes or something like that. But in those 18 minutes, we scored four goals, which means those other guys weren't very consistent. And it's that that's why that's why I've always tried to get somebody who could score it close. You know, you know, Bob, your thing about the Syracuse deal. I mean, we we all know. I mean, Derek didn't Derek didn't play well, didn't want to play well, whatever, and. And he's the guy who we depended on to be able to throw it close to. We didn't have anybody else. And and so you think about all the games that we threw the ball to Derek, that Derek scored or or, or got fouled or scored and got fouled. And we don't have a Derek now. And we also don't have a guy like Derek who who gets hard rebounds and, 
and whether he scores it or throws it out to someone else or goes to the foul line, he was capable of getting really hard rebounds. We don't have that right now. We don't. Related to Pauly, do you have enough time with him? <clears throat> looks like a guy that had he been with you for two or three years, he could be a lot further down the no, he'd be the he'd be the first one to tell you that. He'd be the first one to because he said it to me, Coach. If I had been here, you know, instead of being in these other places, I think I'd have been really good. I mean, he's 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 shared that with. I mean, he knows. Most of them know. It's just, it's it's not just a matter of knowing, though. It's a matter of doing something about it. And it it seems it seems really really easy to fix not looking at the rim but it's not obviously it's not because they struggle with that man struggle he was telling the story about how he didn't even really begin to play basketball until like the 11th grade or whatever so I'm guessing when he was in high school he probably didn't even know about it then, right so I didn't know about him until uh, one of the guys that's has kind of helped him, uh, who I've known for a long time, called me and said, "It hugs, I got one for you." And that's the first time I knew anything about him. Well, he sent me a bunch of tape on when he was at wherever he was. Was he at Manhattan? Yeah. yeah. He sent me a bunch of tape on that, and then sent me some DePaul stuff. <clears throat> Seems like Paulie's a bright guy, a guy that uh, absorbs things. He's supposed to be. Uh, he's supposed to rival Taz as the best cook on the team as well. See, that's that's something people don't know, John. There you go. That's why I threw it out there for you. How's your cooking? Sucks. <laughs> those guys are good. Those guys really are good. If you were gonna whip up something, what would you whip up? Scrambled eggs. Say, Dad, that's good. Oh, it's be I'd really good at scrambled eggs. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you.